yeah, I guess. Necro, what about you? This would mostly more just be a session where you guys, it's essentially a flashback session where you guys sit sit around doing jack shit, reminiscing on your pasts to help flesh things out and possibly give you more story beats to beat you over the head with later. <laughs> Necro, are you up for that? Or can, I, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Uh, I think my headphones are fucking up right now. All right, and my well. internet. I'll be patient with you if things go south, but you think you'd be okay with that? Yeah. All right, yeah. So, you guys find yourself, the two of you find yourselves in a rare lull. Typically, things tend to be happening around you guys, but over the course of these few days, surprisingly, no, nothing's happened. Nothing of note, at least. There have been a few bandits that have supposedly attacked the city's outskirts. There have been a few supposed incursions of, shall we say, less than reputable folk within the shantytown districts of the Iron of the Iron Quarter. But nothing really that you guys could muster. Some of your group members have scattered for the moment, leaving you without anybody to really try and rally a group with. The two of you have stayed relatively close together. Alicia has also been a major sticking point for both of you, for possibly different reasons. Well, mostly because she pays you. The others seem to have scattered to handle their own business throughout the city, maybe even beyond it, but most of them seem to have said they'd return within the next few days. At the moment, it appears to be you two, and depending on your view of him, the tiefling. Though, depending on who, it could either be the asshole or the idiot. Again, depends on you ask. But you find that simply having idle time to yourselves is almost alien. You've been living lives so constantly of action, adventure, constant movement that Suddenly standing still just doesn't feel right for either of you. So you think back to times where actions might have been a bit more constant for you. Necro, we'll start with you. In the years leading up to your eventual meeting of these two, traveling with your rather large companion and Munyeka, the automaton your mother managed to, your mother created and assigned to be a bodyguard of sorts though she claimed it was bodyguard in reality it was more babysitter as much as you ugh, despised that idea but what were your travels like in say the past in fact how long were you traveling before you finally came to that small town uh, I will say a few months, most uh, at max a year. I think we agreed that it was somewhere between the range of, since this world has a twelve day, a twelve month calendar, twelve month year cycle. You were traveling somewhere between the range of six to eight months before you finally stopped there. I believe is what we agreed on. Uh, yeah, about half a year, maybe more. Within those months. And if you want to look on the map and mark out it and say of any locations, because if I remember correctly. You lot got your start in. I believe it was Crossroads Halt or no, it, it was Rover's Landing. You guys got your start in. If I remember it's. Yes, number four. Where the event, where the journey started, or where you're from? Oh, I thought when the journey started. Yeah, well, no, where the journey started, started at Rover's Landing. You come from Syndros. 
different things. Yes, yeah, so from Sindros, you took a ship, you charted a ship, or went on land. Which one did you? Yeah, I went by land. Yeah, so you went through, you passed through Talsok, you then went to Jeltras, a city that housed one of the one of the eight one of the eight arcana Arcane Academies dotted throughout the Imperium. You then went to the city of Ashtred, another of the King cities, another of the Academy cities, going to the town of Iceflow Bay. And then either you took a long way from between Crossroads Halt and Storms Bay until eventually finding yourself at Rover's Landing. Did anything of note happen between those months? Other, my, other than the unfortunate follower that I had it until just recently. Yeah. I really can't say anything else other than those I uh, didn't feel like I'm being watched constantly. Well, yes, there was that feeling. Sometimes you actually caught people watching you, though possibly because of your appearance more than anything. Outside of the city of Sindros, most outside of the city of Great, outside of the city of Sindros, where you were from, most people tended to look down on people of your kind. Not that anybody knew what your kind was. Just something about you always made them feel unperturbed by you. Regardless, let's say, for instance, you came across something similar to what you encountered in the farm. Due to the fact that you had some inkling as to its origins, you most likely found something like it. Since, say, while you were on the path between city, between a city and a town, you found yourself and your band of misfits before this band of misfits on a in a small clearing. When you witnessed a rather common event for this world a planar rift open from it was deposited something of similar make to what you encountered on that farm in Rover's Landing as such thing and while it wasn't as much of putting up a fight the creature was at the entity was actually dying when it had exited the rift. You did get a good look at it. You knew it was definitely of alien makeup. Nothing from the various realms, realities, godly planes, demonic, fiend, devilish. It was definitely something alien, though at the same time it felt familiar. When you next encountered something of similar make in the farm, it was fairly similar, but this one was thriving until you cut it off. You have some notes on these creatures. While you don't know their names, you know them to be akin to parasites that you've studied on. The creature that you found in the woods was a far more stable death than the one you fought in the than the one you fought in the farm. From it, you you managed to derive that it fed in similar ways to ne most necromatic beings from the life force of the surroundings it landed in. It had no way of naturally providing nutrients for itself. In fact, if deprived of these nutrients, it would actually become more lively. 
forcing its main body to actively seek out sources of this nourishment, latching onto them, and you saw it with the farm, finally, rather violently extracting what was needed. You don't, you know that this is also a sort of larval state for this being. This is only due to the fact that the one you saw dead was far larger and far more developed than the one at the farm. It almost seemed to have a solid body. And while it bore, bore the same general shape, a humanoid only with arm, only with vaguely what could be called arms and something akin to a face with one glowing red eye, one glowing greenish eye, it seemed far more put together than the one you found at the farm. You do hope, though, that you never have to meet this thing when it fully comes to... Age wouldn't be the best term. Maturation? Maturity? Whenever this thing is fully fed, you don't want to meet that. You know that much. Beyond that, you have some inkling that it might be connected to your own lineage, or if not your own lineage, something distantly related to it. This isn't something you can prove, it's just... A hunch. A gut feeling, more like. And not a gut feeling like something that you just feel, more a sense of dread. It's like meeting that one relative you always despised. You never wanted it to be true, but... God damn it, it always happened. Regardless, the creature died before you could really po start poking it well enough. Most of this was guess. Most of what you wrote down was guesswork, only reinforced or proven true by your encounter at the farm. Most of it is recorded in a notebook you have on hand with you. I can e I can message you most of these notes if you want later on for your own sanity. If you can't write it down now. Yeah, sure. But beyond that, you've... You also remember that early... That this trip was for your own purpose. What purpose was that? Beyond simply traveling. Because you honestly... You always figured you had ulterior motives. Even if you didn't fully understand them yourself. What would they have done? Uh, because it would have been self-discovery. Of what I am. And that thing you met might have given you a sobering reminder that no matter what you find, it likely won't end well for you. Or at the very least, it won't be a happy reunion. On to more happy notes, Octavius! What was your few years before you finally landed in Rover's Land... Before you, well, pun intended, landed in Rover's Landing yourself. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, I'm here. Um... Uh, depending on how long ago that letter was... Uh... I'm say... say... It was about the letter. The letter was first. You first found the letter six years ago. Shit, damn, really? You've had a long time since then. Though it might have been four. Still, it's been a while. Granted, one of the first events you remember after finding the letter is getting it tattooed on your back. Not the letter itself, but the symbol. Do you ever remember why you tattooed it on your back? Or was that just a impulse gut reaction that you really never put any thought into? From what you told me, I was drunk. True, but... You tend to have a fairly good recollection of your drunk moments. You've only had one or two instances when you've been blackout drunk, and that woke 
And those are memories you'd rather not remember, if at least not anymore since the letter, but point being, drunk you probably had a reason for getting that tattooed on your back. What would that have been? And I'm asking you to fill this in because I cannot answer for drunk you. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Um... You can probably not answer for drunk you, but you can certainly try. Okay. Uh... In his inebriated state, I am going to say it was a way to get be closer. Because this clearly <laughs> symbol means something. If it was important enough to leave on a letter. True. Regardless, at the end of everything. What was your first... For the sake of sanity, let's put a location to where you finally ended up. It was the city of Vestraga. City 13. That was where you first met her. It was, uh... Where did you two meet, exactly? We've always simply said that you two had a tryst for a few days before she left you, but... We've never delved into how you met, or what you were doing right before... Or hell, even a month or two beforehand. As this was sort of that blanket period between the time you had your incident with the plague and leaving your group. You were, this was sort of the first time you'd been on your own and ever. You had a year, maybe a year and a half before you met her. Both of you had wound up in the city for some reason. What was yours? You guys still hear me? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. I'm trying to pick my words carefully. Octavius's reasons for coming to the city are about as simple as you can get. He was fine. He was on his own without his band of merry mistrels behind him. So he's trying to see how well he can handle, hold his own in terms of music by himself and even. He's always wanted to make people happy. Cities usually have the most miserable people in them. So, you were Octavius was inside the city, basically working from tavern to tavern as a musician, a performer of sorts. And when, well, if a woman or two might have wanted to pay for more intimate services, he wouldn't have declined. Was that something he would have done? Paying for sex, if you didn't catch the meaning. No, Mr. Anderson, I understood the meaning. Uh, <laughs> uh, he... This is right after he left the group? Uh, about half a year since. Okay, so... Not half a year, more like getting close to there. About four, five and a half months, maybe. He would have part... He definitely would have done this, but like after... But most likely before he met her and after this... Oh, no. I'm not saying like... No, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to cl clean something up. Uh, yes, he would have uh, been paid for sex, but after like maybe the tenth time he realized that that's not a being paid for that he would have got he would have gone for more like how I, what i've been trying to do is like finding people who actually need that kind of thing rather than making it a career he would have yeah paid, so it was a, sex. it was a short sorry it was a short-term thing yeah 
right? Yes. Got it. Okay, so... And he made a fair bit of coin from this. Until he met her. Tell me, what was the setting where you two meet? Was it a more rundown sort of hole-in-the-wall tavern? Was it a upper-class establishment that he had managed to get that he had managed to get a working that he had managed to get a night working in from the recommendation of a more of a quote unquote satisfied customer from his nightly services? Or was it just a random street corner that you were performing on for the night just to spread the merriment to the entire the entire block or so? I'm gonna go with door number three, Bob. <laughs> So it was a street performer, essentially. You remember faintly, she had two people with her. It was the high elf. It was the high elven woman. Then two others. So you confirm she's a high elf. You knew she was a high elf. You said last time I last time I got an answer, she had no, elven you features. Had, no, you knew she had blue skin. You also know that it was really soft and very easy to put hickeys on. But then again, at that point, your mind started to work on overtime, and you always everything tastes like copper afterwards. Point being, you knew she was a high elf from the start. You just never knew that was of significance, really. Whenever anybody asked you about her, you'd always just say she was an elf. Because, again, you've slept with the whole spectrum, buddy. Point being, regardless. After a while, she was with two body... She was with two people. You figured they were bodyguards, given that one was carrying a massive axe and the other was carrying two daggers and looked and was constantly seeming to try and see if they could kill you with a lit literally kill you with a look. But after some sparkling conversation, something you had found not to put too harsh of a point on it, but conversation was not these people's strong suits. At least most of the people you ha you were associated with, for the most part. She, oh God, it was, it was like you could finally just talk with somebody. It didn't have to be about some dour subject. You remember one thing led to another, and you had managed to waste the entire night simply talking about, fuck, you don't even remember. It was just fun. Uh, so it's like you you meet someone at a party and you just end up not even drinking. You just talk to them until the sun comes up. <laughs> Essentially, you guys just... And I was going to ask, but I figured like with Octavius, what would probably attract him to somebody truly like it would be true love the most is not like anything, but just the fact that they could make him, him happy as well. And for him, sex is kind of, well, his forte. It's more conversation and intellect that would probably attract him, if I can be too bold, so bold as to assume. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can assume that, yeah. That fits his character. But, yeah, no, it's more just, he didn't really want somebody who could rock his, rock his world in bed. He just wanted somebody nice to talk to. And this woman had that in spades. Hell, I mean, when she mentioned the bed, you actually... Octavius actually thought against it because you wanted to keep talking. And thus a honeymoon of sorts began. There was no wedding ceremony. It was more just a time of bliss. But Regardless, unfortunately, it did have to come to an end. Much like 
and this was actually somewhat of a sobering experience for you, you finally found out what it was like to be left proverbially at the altar. Or, well, you were on the receiving end of the hit em and quit em philosophy that most people seem to equ- associate with you. One night, the two of you hopped into bed. A bottle of wine was broken out. Next morning, you woke up. Body covered in bite marks and scratches. An empty bottle of wine on the nightstand with a letter. It was an odd feeling, to say the least. But after that, you scoured the entire city. Pulled every string and connection you had built up in the past few months you had been in the past month or so you had been in that city to try and find her. But to no avail. It was as if she had vanished. For afterwards, events played out similarly. You got drunk, got the tattoo, and eventually you left the city. You managed to bounce back eventually, but just never fully. Point being... Anyways, eventually you had to leave the city, move on to other pastures. You had two choices. You could have either backtrack. Oh, I actually misspoke. City 13 is Jaltras and City 12 is Vestraga. Which one would you have been in, 12 or 13? I'm giving you this choice because I legitimately messed up. Uh, let's let's go with 12. Okay, so you were in City 12. Given that this was about... This was four years, you could have gone anywhere in the Imperium. Or would you have likely gone east, to the east or west? Because keep in mind, you could have also started venturing into the Theocracy. Maybe dabbled in the northern cities there. This is free reign for you to get a bit of exposure to the theocracy before your party is possibly thrust into it forcefully. I'd say, if I'm reading this map map right, uh, the farthest he would have gone south would be uh, City 11, right past the mountain. If I'm reading that right. City 11. Or is 11 the mark of the mountain? Uh, 11... Okay, so you're looking at 11 by 8 or 11 by 14. That is that is to represent that there's a passage cutting through the mountains. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Then, yeah, the 8 on the other side of the mountain. That would be the farthest you go, would ever go south. If you guys haven't gone south. Westward. Uh, that would be the city of... Of Stillholm, a city supposedly covered in mist. And the name lived up. Stillholst, supposedly the city of eternal mist, and lived up to it for the most part. Regardless, point being, point being, you went there, you were exposed to some of the theocracy's culture, and it wasn't that bad. Granted, there wasn't, granted, considering the place you grew up in, almost anywhere is considered a hoot, considered a party. Here, things were a bit more festive. You got it, you spent about a year in this city. A surprise for you, considering the fact that you usually only spend a month or two most in any city in any one one city, or town even. Here you plop down and spend an entire year. So you got exposed to most of the theocracy's culture, its traditions, things along those lines. Yeah. 
Now I have to ask this because you've made it a point before. Am I allowed back in the city? Oh, yes. The theocracy is kind of an odd one. Given that one of the goddesses is quite literally about prosperity and fertility, uh, views on intimate relationships within the theocracy are a bit of a gray area. In fact, it's one of the more archaic and honestly seen as somewhat iffy practices is a supposed belief that if one cannot, that if one desires children, they are perfectly validated in finding it in whoever they can, even if they're married. Now, granted, this right was never exercised with you, but then again, you stayed away from most married women while here because, well, you didn't know much about the theocracy and you didn't want to be, you didn't want to have anything cut off. So for the most part, you were on fairly good behavior. But you did learn about that. You did learn about the fertility thing. Probably not by choice, but, you know, it was there. Point being, when it comes to sexuality and things like that, the theocracy has surprisingly laid back things. From what you had heard from most other travelers coming from there, it was supposed you had pictured some sort of like totalitarian, no fun allowed type business. But in reality, you're fairly certain you saw more brothels in the what can be considered the wealthy districts than you had ever seen in any of the slum towns of any city within the Imperium. Things are a lot different there. Which is partially the reason you stayed. You wanted to absorb some of this culture and bring it back with you. Musicians were fairly easy to find. None were too constrictive or even all that secretive about their knowledge. They freely shared it with you. You learned a few new tech you learned a few new songs, a few new ballads. And even a few new stories to bring back. You're actually, if you, depending on who you go to, you could be welcomed back into the city with open arms. And there are a few establishments in the upper district that you're considered in that you are considered an esteemed guest at. Only one of which is a brothel. Huh. The rest, inns and taverns. To put it simply, the theocracy has a much more varied form of hostility within their environments and nature. So people who can bring joy and happiness that are traveling constantly are sort of seen as simultaneous badass and badasses and idiots for traveling. So anytime they can get one for an extended period of time, they make sure they really want that per they make sure that the person knows they really want them to come back or just stay permanently. As such, you might actually find a few old, a few minstrels that you knew back then still staying there. Point being, eventually you did have to head back because, well, something called you. What was it? Um, the one that got away. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, most likely the, the letter. Anyways, so, for the most part, you've then spent the next two years traveling. 
eventually. Was there anything of note that might have happened on that time? Oh, I I met a, I met and helped a group of elves, and they gave me the mithril horn. Ah. What was this group like? They seem to be forest dwelling, but they clearly didn't live where I've met them. They seem to have been traveling back to it. Um, they were secretive at first till I worked the old charm. <laughs> if I, if I recall correctly. I think I there was an injur one of them was injured and I was able to repair their arm with my magics. They seemed to like me after that. <laughs> well, you from their point of view you essentially stuck an arm that was nearly severed entirely back into the socket spoke a few words and then said and then the arm worked again Yeah, eventually, you and the group left. They did give you a small part, parting gift. It was a small pendant with their symbol. They said if ever you ran into one of them again, to simply show them the symbol and they'd find something. Or rather, they'd help you with something. Anyways, beyond that, after that, is there anything else you guys might have wanted to do? I need currency. <laughs> At this point, I'm very broke. You talking about this point or the flashback? <laughs> Both, actually. <laughs> Being from a rich family, I'm still living in poverty. Well, no, you don't have much on you. Or rather, if there was a reason, would there have been a reason why you might not have that much currency on you? Guess I spit it on material. Yeah, no, your own... Your own instincts to splurge on certain materials might have led to your own problems with money.
But yeah, so for the most part. <laughs> Is there anything else you guys want to add, or...? Well... I, I'll say I, uh, traveled to, uh... I forget which town it was, but, uh... I think it might have been... In Snare, and here and t learn the legend of that blood mist forest, and a group of... Uh, I hear a story of a group of... Idiots that just left their horses there to die! <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> that would actually that was actually gonna lead me to it. So um let me see if I remember. So it was because I know I actually wrote this down somewhere after you guys just ran straight in there. Let me see if I still have it. Da, 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 D &D. It was a supposed it was supposed to be a stealth mission. <laughs> and it still was. You guys just got detected. By the thing we weren't hunting. <laughs> Yep. Uh, yes, the blood mist. You learned it was specifically, if I remember correctly, it was around... I can't remember which city was that again. I remember we started in 15 and we had to go around the 16 but i forget where this miss where exactly the house was i think it was 16. Yeah, six, so yes it was this. around 16. uh the blood mist a forest and imperium surrounding the city close to the city of ensade a coastal city specifically you learned mostly after Spending a bit of time in the company of a scholar, not in the sexual way, and simply you were traveling with a scholar for a bit because you happened to follow along with their caravan to another city. He decided to regale you with the account, supposed counts of accounts of what had happened there. The blood mists were a remnant of the planar war, specifically. This forest was once a sacred haven for Fenthra's gatherings, specifically two tribes of elves. These tribes had apparently been particular thorns in the sides of Vor of Vorthigal's forces. Vorthigal being the god, the traitor god of monsters and other such things. Specifically, abominations, aberrations, anything that generally breaks the code of what would be considered normal. Though granted, his influence does spread to more out-of-the-box kind of things. Specifically dragons, trolls, things along those lines. Point being, Vorthigal decided that it was time for him to... And nip that little, nip it in the bud before it became a full-blown problem rather than simply an annoyance. So, you know, he did what any sane god would do, curse the forest with an endless, to endlessly be covered in a blood mist that would, that would cause anything that lived within it to become bloodthirsty monsters, twisted, being twisted shadows of their former selves to hunt down and slaughter anything that came inside. You know, like you do. Most animals or anything that lived in there that wasn't already sentient became far more feral, far more aggressive, and far larger. Most anything that was carnivorous became very quickly engulfed in a constant war of either starvation or devouring anything that it could find. Anything that wasn't carnivorous, <laughs> well they usually succumb to the latter part of the carnivore's struggle. 
The elves got it the worst, though. Apparently, this magic, this curse, affected the shrines they held to Fenthra the worst. And when they went to those shrines to try and pray for a boon to drive out this blood mist, instead, they became ensnared in a fog of it. This fog lasted for a month, and they didn't emerge from it for that entire month. When they finally did, they were twisted. Now tall, pale, pale-skinned, and thin. Unnaturally thin. Most of them even had bones poking out of the skin itself. They became the Wendigos. Bloodthirsty monsters, hell-bent on protecting the forest. Even if they had forgotten why. Then at some point in the past one. Tw- the past 20 years, a group of adventurers decided, hey, let's just go in there without any major supplies or anything, and left a couple of horses that got butchered and slaughtered. They also apparently wrecked one of the few castles that was still on the borders of it that could have been reclaimed. reclaimed. The scholar had n- reclaimed that could have been reclaimed. It was sort of on the very edge, and only, I guess, what could be considered high tide with the fog, with the mist actually encompass it it could have been reclaimed but apparently something that group did caused it to structurally be weakened in such a way that the wendigos could constantly get in and out of it regardless of whether the mist was in there we did nothing but hold a door together to break it again something you guys didn't know you did you attracted the wendigos attention to there long enough that they meant that they managed to break down the main door oh <laughs> So long as the door had remained intact, it could have been reclaimed. But, eh, oh well. The castle was already in disrepair, anyways, and any attempts would have been a would have been a long would have been a dream, really. But regardless, point being, very expensive dream. Exactly. Isn't there a tunnel connecting to the sewer system of that town from that castle? Oh yeah, that got caved in. Okay, that's nice. Regardless. Oh, sweet, merciful God. Hold on. I, no, never mind. I, I, I thought I thought I thought I made a revelation, but never mind. No, what was it? No, you, you said he's a blue high elf. So I was going to think, how many, bl- how many blue elves do I kn- know from the previous campaigns? And then I realized... None of them lived anywhere near that place. You don't know. They could have moved. But I will give you this. None of them actually did. It is. I will tell you this. It is nobody that you have met before in another campaign. That's good. Now, granted, that doesn't mean they're not an important person, but that's a problem we'll get to at another time. Go run into Rainer. Back to Necro. Or is there anything else you guys want to add in? You forgot the part about how we saved the princess from vampire vampires. That story. Oh yeah, that got told too, but this guy was mostly just concerned about the forest. Oh, the forest.
And now it's Necro's turn. I wanted to came that castle so badly. You what? Would have been a good place for Elizabeth if you, if you think about it. I don't think she could kill everything in the forest before it killed her. It's been 20 years. At all? Yeah, that's I don't want. I don't want to continue dragging this out if you guys can't think of anything else. So. I got nothing. Suppose that would be a net, guys. <laughs> Sorry, there wasn't much else we could do, but. Yeah, sorry. It's alright. Anyways, night guys.